السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى وبعد My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of your program Gardens of the Pious and today's episode is number 340 and it is actually the third in uh, study in chapter number 96 of uh, Riyadh al-Salihin the book of etiquette and we will continue explaining the recommendation of bidding farewell and advising a friend before traveling. I also make dua and ask in dua uh, from others. Today's hadith is right to the point. Before I discuss the hadith, uh, it is a hadith where the scholars have differed with regards to its authenticity. So some of them say it is very weak hadith due to one of the narrators and some say it is an okay hadith and that's why based on the difference of the opinion of the scholars of hadith concerning the soundness and the authenticity of the hadith there will be also um, a list of uh, conclusions which we may conclude from the hadith if it is sound let's study the hadith first then we'll learn about that inshallah it is narrated by Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, قال استأذنت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في العمرة فأذن وقال لا تنسانا يا أخي من دعائك فقال كلمة ما يصرني أن لي بها الدنيا وفي رواية قال أشركنا يا أخي في دعائك As I said, the hadith is collected by Abu Dawood wa Tirmidhi and they say it is Hassan Sahih Umar ibn Khattab may Allah be pleased with him said um, once I took permission from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to perform Umrah he permitted me to do so and then he said my dear brother do not forget me in your dua in your supplication as we do say to one another include me in your dua then Umar ibn al-Khattab, the narrator of the hadith, said, I wouldn't exchange these words for the whole world. It means a lot. Of course it does. Imagine when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, uh, requests somebody who is definitely much lesser than him to make dua for him. This is like an admiration to the person whom you make your requesting him to make dua for you. In another narration, the, ma the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to Umar Khattab, include me, my brother, in your uh, supplication. <clears throat> so, in this very interesting hadith, when he said, ashrikna fi du'aik, include me in your supplication, or la tansana ya ukhayya, Min du'aik, and the word ukhaya is a minimization to the word akh and it is normally said to the person whom you feel very close to so he said do not forget to make du'a for me yeah go ahead and perform umrah so those who looked at the hadith as a, a sound hadith they said we can learn a lot of things number one the recommendation of asking others to make du'a for you, especially in the cases and the conditions where you assume most likely their supplication will be accepted. Normally, when the person is performing Umrah, or going for Hajj, or on the day of Arafah, uh, or while fasting, or while traveling, their supplications are most likely to be accepted. 
because of being involved in this kind of very righteous activity, this great act of worship. So that's why people ask those who are going for Hajj, those who are going for Umrah, please include me in your dua. And is it permissible? It is definitely permissible because there is no prohibition against that. But when we say it is permissible, if the hadith is sound, then it would be further recommended, not just permissible. You see the difference. If the hadith is proven to be sound, then if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sought um, from Umar al-Khattab to make dua for him while performing Umrah, then it means it is recommended, highly recommended for us when you think that this person's dua is accepted or most likely to be accepted or this person may be righteous or is going to do uh, this great act of worship to say include me in your dua it will be rather recommended this is uh, a major difference between the scholars who looked into the hadith as a weak hadith and the others who looked into it as a sound hadith but by the end it is permissible to ask others to make dua for you why some of the scholars such as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and many others who say that it is not really recommended to do so because of the following reasons. They said that it includes an admiration to the person whom you are asking him to make dua for you. Like, you know, I know that your dua is mustajab, Allah answers your dua, so include me in your dua. It may make him think of himself very high. I mean, it may, it is not necessarily the case every time. Number two, they wanted you to rely totally on Allah the Almighty and not to ask for any help from anyone, not even asking any person to make dua for you. But if the hadith is sound and according to those who look the hadith as a sound hadith, then it is recommended to ask others whom you assume the righteousness or you assume that they will be involved in a great worship such as Umrah or Hajj to make dua for you to benefit out of the conditions which normally enhances the acceptance of the dua. If you remember the hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said the evil effect of earning unlawfully even though the person will be traveling dusty with the shovel hair and he raises his hands, so he's fulfilling all the requirements, all the etiquette of making dua, which is raising the hands, facing the qibla. Meanwhile, he's traveling, and he is so much in need for Allah's help, and that enhances the acceptance of dua. And he says, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. Yet his dua is not accepted, because he's been earning unlawfully. So his food, his clothes, and his drink, everything is from unlawful earning. The hadith is a reference that these conditions of being traveling with the shovel hair covered with dust shows humility and it enhances the chances of accepting your dua. Some people ask on the day of Arafah, can I take a shower? Can I comb my hair? Can I do all of that? It, it is permissible to take a shower, of course. But on the day of Arafah, avoid combing your hair, avoid doing any of that because this humble condition actually is a condition which makes your dua most likely to be accepted. You're desperately in need for Allah's help. And the Prophet said the best of the supplications, the supplication which is made on the day of Arafah. That was hadith number 713 and now with the following hadith uh, which is also collected by Imam al-Tirmidhi narrated by Salim um, Ibn Abdullah Ibn Umar Ibn al-Khattab May Allah be pleased with him and his father and his grandfather Hadith number 714 عبد الله ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما كان يقول للرجل إذا أراد سفرا أدن مني حتى أودعك كما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
يودعنا فيقول استودع الله دينك وأمانتك وخواتيم عملك سالم the son of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab may Allah be pleased with him his father and his grandfather said that whenever a man was to set out on a journey my father Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhuma would say to him draw near so that I may bid farewell to you as the messenger of Allah peace be upon him used to bid farewell to us he then says I entrust Allah with your religion your amana, your trust and the conclusion of your deeds what does that mean and obviously the following hadith uh, which is narrated by Abdullah uh, Ibn Yazid al Qutami, have the same meaning so whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, given a farewell to the army, he would say to them, أَسْتَوْدِعُوا اللَّهَ دِينَكُمْ وَأَمَانَتَكُمْ وَخَوَاتِيمَ أَعْمَالِكُمْ This is a sound hadith in which uh, Abdullah ibn Yazid al-Khatmi used to say, and he said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, whenever uh, would give a farewell to the army before they set out, he would say, I entrust Allah with your religion, your amana, and the conclusion of your deeds. So now, hadith number 714 confirms hadith number 714. Hadith Abdullah ibn um, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. After the death of the Prophet sallallahu when we spoke about the biography of Abdullah ibn Umar back then, we said that he used to resemble the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in everything, the way he walks, in the way he talks, to the point that people used to confuse him with the Prophet sallallahu if they were to see him coming from far away. So, now the Prophet sallallahu is dead, and Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, whenever somebody is traveling, he would say, come near, let me give you the same farewell that the Prophet sallallahu used to give us whenever we are sitting out or traveling. In the following hadith, it is confirmed that the Prophet sallallahu used to bid a farewell to the whole army before sitting out or an expedition or a group of the companions by saying, أَسْتَوْدُعُ اللَّهَ دِينَكُمْ وَأَمَانَتَكُمْ وَخَوَاتِيمَ أَعْمَلِكُمْ Which means, um, I entrust Allah with your religion. What does it mean, I entrust Allah with your religion? Nowadays, brothers and sisters, some people travel from one country to another and they get to see things that they only hear about it in stories or they see it on television, but now they get to see it. So, they may get affected, they may get tried and tested. People who are living in, uh, you know, vast majority Muslim countries, or practicing cities or villages, for a reason or another they had to travel abroad. Once they open their eyes in the plane, then when they land to any of these countries, uh, you know, you feel like you're going crazy. What is this? I can't believe my eyes. You know? So now there is a big fitna. So whenever a person is bidding a farewell to somebody who's traveling, he says, أَسْتَوْدِعُ اللَّهَ دِينَكَ I entrust Allah with your religion. I ask Allah to preserve your deen for you. Many years back, may, maybe more than 20 years ago, I was flying from Cairo to JFK, New York. Then I saw in the plane, when we boarded the plane, and once the plane took off, I saw a couple of young people, young men, who were cheering, clapping, singing, and I heard them because I was sitting so close to them. They were uh, celebrating. They said exactly, they said that in Arabic, and I understood what they said. They said, Welcome to freedom, welcome to drinking, welcome to women, 
Now we can do everything. Everything is permissible. No restrictions, no more. This is what I heard. And I feel very bad that they intended evil. Even they were hanging between the heavens and the earth. You know, a person in this condition must have some fear and beg Allah the Almighty for safety and security, not promises to disobey Allah and to challenge him, you know. So subhanAllah, when we landed to the airport, uh, I finished my, uh, you know, passport control and immigration, and I was leaving, and these two guys were held. They did not release them. They did not let them in. They were held by the immigration, and they sought somebody's help to interpret for them because they didn't know much of English. I happened to be the person on the spot, so they asked me if I can translate for them. And subhanAllah, after doing you know, my job just translating for them, they banned them from entering the country, and they decided to ship them back home. You know, those people, I'm very sure, uh, they were very upset. And they, they felt very sorry that after getting a visa and paying tens of thousands in order to get the visa and the tickets and then flying and actually reaching to the U.S. soil, but they were not able to enter because they figured out that they, they have forged some evidence or whatever. There is no point of discussing the details. But subhanAllah, maybe Allah has saved them because they have intended evil. They said, once we land, everything is free, everything is permissible, women drinking, dancing, and all of that. So when a person is leaving his parents, his teachers, his family members, his friends, they should bid a farewell to him by saying, uh, Remind him or her of being righteous wherever you may be at. Look what the Prophet said in the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Whether you are in Mecca, you're living in Cairo next door to Al Azhar, or you're going to uh, New York, you're going to California, going to anywhere. Allah the Almighty is supervising all his creation and every place belong to him so if you think that the place requires a person to be good and another place allows a person to feel free to do whatever they want to do this is absolutely false you do worship Allah the Almighty irrespective of the place and the time Ramadan is finished it doesn't mean that everything which was haram now it's halal Absolutely not. It's supposed to uh, inspire you to do the opposite, to be God-fearing, to keep your duty to Allah the Almighty because you have earned more taqwa during this month. So it's a beautiful uh, bed. It's a beautiful invocation and a, a great reminder. I ask Allah to preserve your deen for you and to protect your religious commitment so that you will not be exposed to fitan and you will not be exposed to trials. Then, وَأَمَانَتَكَ And your honesty. Again, brothers and sisters, stemming from the command of the Prophet ﷺ of being righteous wherever you may be at. Some people are under the impression that and I have a lot of youth who have talked to me that since we live in a non-Muslim country, everything is permissible. One day I saw somebody who had the, uh, the public phone. And a lot of queens came out of that. I said, you can't take that. This is haram. He said, they are kufar. No. This is not your money. Even if you find it, if you find 10,000, 100,000, a million, this money is not yours. So whether it belongs to a Muslim, a very practicing Muslim, or a non-Muslim, the money must go back. 
إن الله أمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها. So this is our duty. You're not allowed to earn or collect anything, even if it is a لقطة, even if it is a lost property. You don't say I found it. It doesn't have any owner. In Islam, a لقطة, the lost items, if it is something valuable, it must be announced for a year. Some items for more than that. Every day you say, you guys, whoever lost this uh, gold bracelet or this earring because it's something valuable. Uh, and instead of that, you can post an ad. You can let people know in the same area. And then after one year, what do you do? You take it for yourself? No, you don't take it for yourself. It will be given in a charity on behalf of the person who lost it because it is not yours. You don't take anything which is not yours. That is the meaning of أَسْتَوْدِعُ اللَّهَ أَمَانَتَكَ I entrust Allah with your amana to maintain your uh, duty to Allah and to others. And خَوَاتِيمَ amalik. That's another very beautiful dua. What is the meaning of خَوَاتِيمَ amalik? The Prophet ﷺ said in the sound hadith, إنما الأعمال بالخواتيم إنما الأعمال بالخواتيم Deeds are by their conclusions And in the story which is narrated by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari He mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ said about a man, a monk Who have worshipped Allah for 70 years Living in isolation But every week he would come down to the village, go to the market, collect the food which is sufficient for him for the whole week, and then he would go back to his hut and stay for a whole week. Seventy years like that. Then subhanAllah, once on, while on his way to, uh, to the market, he happened to meet one of these women. And uh, she was a bad woman. And she trapped him. And he actually went along with her and he spent a whole week in haram with her adultery and all of that they spent a whole week then after they spent a whole week he came back to his senses and he realized that he's messed up and after 70 years of uh, devotion and worship he, he, he messed up everything so he didn't go back to his heart he repented to Allah and he went away and he just lived with the poor people and he have nothing to do but istighfar. So some poor people, they were about 12 people, homeless. And every day somebody would come and give them loaves of bread. Just bread. They live for the whole day on a loaf of bread. So he distributed the bread on them. But now they have an extra one, which is the former monk. So one of them said, where is mine? He said, I give you what I give you every day. So this monk felt sorry that he had taken the bread, which normally or every day this poor person used to take. So he threw it to him and said, take it. Then subhanAllah, uh, this person died, the monk. And then when he died, they wait the seven days he spent in haram with this prostitute versus the 70 years of sincere devotion and worship and the seven days in haram outweighed all the years that he spent in sincere devotion and worship so now he was uh, you know doomed to hell and to be punished then they wait one single thing that he did before his death which is giving this loaf of bread to the poor person and giving precedence to him over himself even though he himself was starving again is the seven days that he lived in haram and the sadaqah of giving the loaf of bread outweighed the seven days which he spent in haram so he was saved so it could be very little tiny deed but it is a conclusion of your life the last thing that you do and it causes you to be saved 
or vice versa. May Allah protect us against that. That's why in the hadith which is collected by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, he said the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, إن الله إذا أحب عبدا استعمله Whenever Allah likes somebody, he utilizes him. They said, and how would Allah utilize any person, O Messenger of Allah? He said, يوفقه لعمل صالح قبل موته ثم يقبضه عليه. So when you, when you hear يستعمله, it doesn't mean that Allah is in need for anyone. Rather, he will enable him, he will bless him, he will make it easy for him to do good deeds right before his death then he will take his soul while in this condition. While doing what? While doing something which is good. So the supplication of I ask Allah and I trust Allah the Almighty to keep you on the straight path until the end of life, uh, until the end of your life. The conclusion of your deeds, I entrust Allah to keep them good. Because that what counts most. The last impression is the most important impression. It is the tradition of Allah the Almighty that a person who lives as a righteous person shall die as a righteous person. If he was really righteous in private as well as in public. And it is also Allah's tradition and plan that a person who is wicked as long as his life most likely he will die in this condition. A person who was wicked in and out, then he would die in this condition. This is, you know, the general ruling. Of course, there are some exceptions. So if a person is trying his best not to sleep before offering the water prayer, this is a good conclusion in case that he goes to sleep and he doesn't get up. So the last thing he did was his prayer. That's why in the other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Whenever a person dies while fasting, فَقَدْ قُتِمَ لَهُ بِخَيْرٍ He goes straight to heaven. Why? Because he died while fasting. A person who died while was performing hajj with the Prophet, he fell off the back of his camel. And he was in ihram. So the Messenger of Allah said, when you uh, wrap him in ihram, keep in, in his coffin, keep his head and face uncovered. Why? He said, because he will be resurrected on the Day of Judgment, مُلَبِّيًا saying, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ what an honor to be resurrected on the day of judgment in a condition of ihram and mulabiya. Let's take a short break, brothers and sisters, and we'll be back insha'Allah in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Messenger after a messenger after a messenger, ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Prophet Nuh alaihi salam, Prophet Hud alaihi salam, Prophet Saleh alaihi salam, Prophet Ibrahim alaihi salam, Prophet Musa alaihi salam, Prophet Isa alaihi salam, and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A series of the lights of guidance, discussing the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa taala, learning from their lives going through this exciting, amazing, informative, special journey with the lights of guidance on Huda TV, where we will discuss together, where we will live together with each and every prophet in an amazing episode, learning from them, pondering upon their experience, meditating upon their life, relating to it, and getting lessons that affects us in our life to be the servants and the followers of those prophets and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be discussing this series of lights of guidance. So be with me and join me in this beautiful series so we learn together and we pass it through the next generation. So please join us on Huda TV. I will be with you in this amazing journey. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in seven different ways of recipe. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, she's a woman by herself. She doesn't even have a husband who's ever touched her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a child to Maryam alayhi salam. Look at that. She said that, how will I have a child? Walam yamsasni bashar. How will I have a child whilst I've never even been touched by a man? One of the unique things about the story is that it's not like Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses. Can you imagine that Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses? He became sick from the effect that this ayah ended up having on his, on his mind. If you are not positive, you cannot motivate. Absolutely. If you are not positive, you cannot recognize, you cannot even look for the good things. Absolutely. Unless it is in your hmm. heart, you hmm. cannot practice it and exercise it with other people. <coughs> the meaning of the word La ilaha illallah to everyone, to all the people who are around him. Right. As many people as he can. So this is the mission. Mm -hmm. But this concept solves many problems. Yes. Whenever you visit a place that the Prophet Muhammad so is I sitting in, mm. if you don't know him, you will never be able to say that this is Prophet Muhammad or this is Prophet Muhammad. Tell me about a person in this world who does not need mercy. Mm. Mercy is a key way of or course. a key word for healing the hearts of human beings. What happens is they get so many rejections that they feel so bad about themselves they don't know that what's been rejected now is your current skills your current experience which by time and effort can develop yeah. so primarily you are going to you are doing this job so perfect it and this is part of our great religion is mm. perfection and perhaps mm. there is another chapter about this perfect right. your work give mm -hmm. the right to the job that you have Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone numbers is a code 002-0238-55132 and the other number is same area code then 01005469323. The email address is gardens at huda.tv. Now with the last hadith in this chapter, hadith number 716. عن أنس رضي الله عنه قال جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله إني أريد سفرا فزودني فقال زودك الله التقوى قال زدني قال وغفر ذنبك قال زدني قال ويسر لك الخير حيث ما كنت the hadith is collected by Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi and it is a fair hadith. Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that a man once came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, I intend to travel and go on a journey. So make dua for me. He said, may Allah grant you the provision of piety. The man said, please, Give me some more dua. He said, May he forgive you your sins. And again the man said, Pray some more for me. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, May he facilitate for you all that is good wherever you are. Alright. So here, a man is traveling. And... He goes to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he's asking him for the provision. In the Quran, Allah the Almighty says, 
فإن خير الزاد التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب and seek you all your provision whenever you're going in a journey and the ayat were mentioned in the course of hajj if you're going for hajj people used to come from Yemen used to come from here and there from Asham so you do not travel without provision you take your food your water with you you take whatever you need on the journey and then Allah Almighty said and indeed the best of all provision is at taqwa if you are in a condition of righteousness and piety then this is the best of all provision it doesn't at all means that you shouldn't take the rest of your provision as far as food or drink or medication no it only says that the best of provision is definitely a taqwa once the person is in a state of righteousness and he is pious he's got fearing then Allah the Almighty is always next to him helping him protecting him and assisting him subhanallah so long as you keep your duty to Allah Allah will protect you so long as you do as Allah the Almighty instructed you to do you will find him always in front of you to jahak on your way doing what in case that you need any help any assistance he's always there to help you why because during your prosperity during your leisure time during whenever you are healthy whenever you are wealthy you have been always protecting and keeping your duties towards him so now whenever you are in need he is always there to help you and protect you so if you are God fearing then don't worry Allah will take care of you Allah will protect you if you are poor Allah will provide for you uh, if you are looking for a job Allah will find you not any job the best job which you could never dream of يَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Who will provide for him for means which he could never anticipate as Allah the Almighty stated in Surah Al-Talaq. So this man asked the Prophet ﷺ to give him a provision or to pray for him or supplicate for him or to advise him. He said, زَوَّدَكَ اللَّهُ التَّقْوَى And it goes both ways as a supplication and as a command. Be God fearing, keep righteous as long as you're traveling. You do not think because you're traveling abroad and no one is seeing you of your family members or your tribe, your clan, then you do as you wish. Keep and maintain the condition of righteousness. Didn't Allah the Almighty say so in Surah Al Imran? Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Oh, you believe, keep your duty to Allah as it should be, and die not but as Muslims. And if you are in, in this condition of righteousness, it will guide you, your sayings, your actions. In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah the Almighty said, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Oh, who you believe, keep your duty to Allah to the point that you would control your tongue and you would only say what is righteous. قُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا If you do, now collect your harvest. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Allah will set right all your affairs and will forgive you your sins, will facilitate your journey for you, will ease your way, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدِ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed achieved the ultimate success. May Allah make us among them. Then he said, زِدْنِي Supplicate more for me. He said, وَغَفَرَ ذَنْبَكْ Al-Ghufran isn't only forgiveness. Al-Ghufran, you know, those who studied the seerah, the Prophet ﷺ was wearing the helmet 
and the two rings on the day of Uhud penetrated his cheek from al mighfar what, wait a minute, Mirfar, that sounds like Malfira. Yes. Whatever you wear to conceal something that's called Mirfar. So Ghufran is the concealment, concealing and hiding. Hiding what and concealing what? Concealing your sins. And this is actually a step on the path of forgiveness. Whenever Allah the Almighty conceals a sin for any person, then Allah the Almighty will forgive it for him. He says in the hadith that when Allah the Almighty will draw one of his servants very near to him and he will talk to him in private, not in front of everyone. Abdi, my servant, do you remember such and such sin? Yes, I do. The servant is admitting because there is no other way around. If you would not say the truth, Allah will put a seal on the person's mouth and then shahida alayhim sam'uhum wa absaruhum wa juluduhum everything the body parts will bear witness so the servant has no choice but to say yes while in a state of humility and do you remember such and such sin on such and such day yes I do yes I do yes I do then after he admits all his sins and Allah the Almighty revise with him what he did in the past he says Satartuha alayka fi dunya No one did know about those sins Because I have concealed your sins for you in the dunya And today I'm going to forgive them for you as well May Allah forgive us all our sins May Allah never ever expose us And disclose our sins A sitr is such a great blessing and in order to enjoy this blessing, there is one thing you need to do. Do not expose others' faults. Do not make a scandal out of that. Do not show joy and delight at the faults and the errors of others. Some people have this desire. Of going around and telling everyone, Oh, did you know the girl next door, she was involved in this and this and this and that. You know, if you ever come across anything like that, just say the following supplication. Say, Alhamdulillahi, alladhi aafani, mimma bitala bihi ghayri, wa faddalani ala kathirin min khalqihi tafdila. All praise be to Allah, who pardoned me and protected me, and protected me, Again, is what he afflicted others with. And he made me superior to many of his creation. By protecting you against those sins, by warding you off and keeping you off or keeping the sins away from you, you're blessed. You're better than others. You know, do you think that the addicts love to do what they're doing? They want to be treated. But it is difficult. They want to be treated, they regret, they got into this, but it is very difficult. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al afiyah and pray for others. Ask Allah to forgive them, to conceal the sins, to cure them, to guide them, and instead of looking into yourself as, look, alhamdulillah, I'm better. فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Do not admire yourselves. My sheikh and my teacher once was given a lecture in the masjid. The speakers were equal outside the masjid. And subhanallah, there was um, a woman who does this kind of work, prostitution. And she was a dancer. And subhanallah, all of a sudden, she felt very thirsty on the way. She was going to uh, do her role in the nightclub, in the nightclub, as she felt very thirsty, she found a source of water, she went to drink. While she was drinking, she heard the sheikh was speaking about modesty, chastity, and forgiveness, and how forgiving is Allah the Almighty. So she paused, she didn't go to work, and she sent a piece of paper to the speaker. 
And until this moment, I didn't know how this piece of paper went all the way, thousands of audience, you know, one after another, handing it over to the person in front of him and so on until he reached the sheikh. Normally, in this condition, you have a pile of questions on papers. But Allah the Almighty made this piece of paper fall in his hand. He read it. And this woman introduced herself and she wanted to repent. She told him the story and she wanted to repent. And he took it from there. And Alhamdulillah, it was a turning point in the life of this ballet dancer. And she became a righteous person. And that's why we don't say names. And that's why we say, Alhamdulillah, we're very pleased, we're very happy. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to rescue somebody from evil. So he puts on his way anything, any event, any person which will cause that event to be a turning point in his life. And in this case, they will be better, sometimes better than the person who was the cause of giving them guidance. So brothers and sisters, al ghufran is number one, is to be in a state of sitr. So concealing your sin is maghfara from al maghfar then furthermore is forgiving the sin and that was a supplication of the messenger of Allah peace be upon him to the man who said make dua for me I'm traveling so he says then he said and make some more dua for me he said which means two things if you ever err if you ever for, for, uh, you know commit a sin may Allah conceal the sin for you may Allah not expose you and furthermore, may Allah forgive you your sins. Then he asked for more dua. And trust me, if I were him, if I was in his position, I would have done the same or even more. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ is making dua for you, which means 100% his supplication for you will be answered and you will be blessed. What was the third supplication based on his request? He said, وَيَسَّرَ لَكَ الْخَيْرَ May Allah make it easy for you wherever you are, wheresoever you may be at. And this is such a great supplication because sometimes you, you, you leave early morning because you're traveling to the city or the state because you have a case, a traffic ticket you need to take care of, or you have to meet the lawyer, or you're going for a medical checkup. And after traveling, you say, Oh my God, today is a, a day off. No one is there. So you wasted a lot of time and money and you traveled and actually uh, you didn't achieve anything. Or sometimes you go but it is very crowded and you know a lot of people and you are not able to fulfill your need or get your job done. So at taysir, at taysir, which is to make things easy. This is a beautiful supplication that we need to remind one another if somebody is leaving, if somebody is traveling, make this dua for him. زَوَّدَكَ اللَّهُ الْبِرَّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَغَفَرَ ذَنْبَكَ وَيَسَّرَ لَكَ الْخَيْرَ يَسَّرَ لَكَ الْخَيْرَ Not anything, which means, may Allah make easy for you what is good for you. Wheresoever it may be at. Sometimes I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to buy this vehicle. But Allah in his knowledge knows that this is not good for you. So you say, pray, please make dua for me that I will be able to buy it. No, I'm not going to make this dua. Rather I will say, may Allah make it easy for you to get what is good for you. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, we've come to the end of today's edition of your program, Gardens of the Pious, until... Uh, the next episode, inshallah, I leave you in the care of Allah. Qulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rasulallah, Habib Allah, Allah our God is the greatest, the one and only glory to him. He born in humans to be the best And give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest The one
on the door in glory to him. He born in humans to be the best and give his best to religion to them. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about it in paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling the best with the cheapest price. So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise, worshipping cows, fire and stones, selling their best with the cheapest price.